Um, before we get going too far, I'm going to need a few volunteers. They need to be men or boys, if anyone feels brave enough to come up on stage. Just a reminder, if you've got a slip of paper or intermission, you're meeting Lancelot behind all the chairs, and we will let you know what you're going to be doing for us in the play. By the end of it, you will know that nothing of great worth comes without a price. Integrity must be tried, loyalty mustered, and courage proven. But there, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I start, I must start at the beginning. Great Britain had been without a king for many years. When the last king died, he left no heir to take his place. The great giant wizard Merlin left Camelot, promising the people he would find the true king and bring him back to Camelot's castle. He promised to warn the people that if anyone other than the true king assumed the throne, there would be dire consequences. Merlin had not been seen again for years until one day an unsuspecting soul discovered his whereabouts. And thus, our story begins. And why are you looking for me? So you can be the next king, of course. The next 
King? Yes, yes, child, the next king. But we must read a few of yet. It says so in the Oracle. What? Here. It says here that a man of twenty and four will rise from among the people, a pure soul, who carries himself with truth and honor, a courageous soul, fearless in battle and firm in his values. When his scalpel is found and safe in his hand, he will be the rightful king of Great Britain. Who's Excalibur? Not who, but what? Excalibur is a sword son, an enchanted sword, and the king who ends up with it will be the greatest king this country will ever have. You are, will be the greatest king this country will ever have. Now go home, tell no one you have seen me, for now is not the time. And tell no one you are to be king, when you have reached the age of twenty and four, come and get to this tower, and I'll teach you more of Excalibur and how to obtain it. I will, Merlin. That's a good one. And Merlin, thank you for not turning me into a snake. <laughs> became a noted huntsman, studied the stories of ancient kings, and quietly continued to look forward to the day when he would once again climb that castle tower. I promise I will let Father become king. He would be the first one I'd ask. 
You promise? Of course. You're such a master with the sword. Not as good as you are for my friend. And never mind wondering what if. You both love the oracle. Only Merlin can decide who the next king will be. There'd be great consequences if it wasn't obeyed. Well, then I hope I live long enough to see the day when the rightful king is on the throne. <laughs> I hope I live to see that day too. Now I must be off. But Austin, you just got here. There's something very important that I need to do. Where are you going? I will be back later! Be brave, my boy. 
from all the stories that I heard, I didn't expect them to be told. <laughs> From a noble line, several generations back, the queen gave birth to twin boys. The older twin was made the next king, and the younger twin was given the privilege of being named the prince. Father came through the line of the younger twin. So you see, I am of noble blood, be it ever so ancient. The people of the northern woods grew up hearing the oracles of Merlin's quest to find the rightful king of Great Britain, and Father, knowing his ancestry, insisted to Merlin that it was his birthright to be the next king. Merlin, however, told my father that he was not to be the king. My father was a good man, Arthur, but he did have a terrible temper. He quarreled with Merlin and refused to respect Merlin's authority. So Merlin and Anger himself caused a persistent winter to fall upon the northern woods until one of my father's descendants would act as the true defender of Britain's rightful king. What well, an incredible story. It's extraordinary that the villagers here survive and persevere in these conditions. It's extraordinary that you do too. Well, the people of my kingdom left when the winter came, but Father and I stayed. After Father died, I promised myself I'd never leave here, that I'd stay true to my kingdom to the day it falls. I've been able to take care of myself because my father would take me hunting and taught me how to use a bow and arrow. There are plenty of animals in these woods who just know where to find them. You hunt? Yes. This catch is the one I am most proud of. That's a pheasant feather. I, I finally found one in the upper, upper corner, corner of the eastern woods. Oh, you have caught one too, I assume. Yes, and I know how difficult it is. So I know that you must be a remarkable huntress. I guess there are only eight left now.
Return to your church. Yes, and I have brought with me a new friend. This is Guinevere, Princess of the Northern Woods. Guinevere, this is my oldest friend, Ruben. Madam? Arlette, Arthur's back. Arthur? <laughs> And who's she? I'm the of the Northern Woods. And who are you? I'm Arlette. Bread baker, Camelot. <laughs> oh, you know I love you like a brother. I know she's pretty. But I would caution you against trusting her too quickly. Any woman who has the audacity to call herself a princess when her hasn't had a king on the throne for years is bound to be up to something. I appreciate your caution, Arlette, but I don't think she likes me. Arlette, mm -hmm. <laughs> can she stay with you tonight? <laughs> Fine, Arthur, but only because you like family. Let's go, princess. I suppose I'd be honored you'd stay with me. <laughs> we up. See you tomorrow. So, is she the reason why you couldn't tell us where you were going? <laughs> no, man, get out of the village. I left not knowing who I would come across. Anyway, I bid you good night. I need to rest before I can carry on tomorrow. Arthur, where are you going tomorrow? I'm not sure yet. Mm. You're not sure yet? I'm really not. Arthur, we are friends. I have always thought of you as a brother. What is this great secret you are keeping from me? It is not like you to be this way. You can trouble me with, with whatever it is that is troubling you. I promise I won't tell a soul. All right, Ruben. I will tell you, but please know it is a strange story. Try me. I have met Merlin. Merlin? The great wizard? Yes, the very one. Why, Arthur, I can hardly believe you. But it is true, and he told me that I am to be the next king. You king? Yes. And you're being very serious? Yes, and for proof of it, here is the oracle that Merlin gave me. Of course I do. Yes, yes. Forgive me, Arthur. I'm still in shock at all. I understand, Ruben, but now you must see why it is so important for me to, to continue. Merlin gave me this map, and it led me to Gwenevere. Now Gwenevere will aid me in my journey to gather allies. Let me come with you. No, Ruben. Please, promise you that you'll stay here and help continue to keep peace among the villagers. I know where to find you when I need you, old friend. I promise to say. Thank you, friend. Arthur, King, oh, he's a good sort of fellow, as best as they come. But King, he has spent most of his time alone, off hunting or reading over scrolls. Well, I have been among the people. I have worked to increase peace. I did begun to assume that one day I might even be. Wait, the oracle does not make mention of Arthur's name. It only says a man of twenty and four. It could have just as easily have been me. If I could only get to Excalibur first, then I could be the next king of Great Britain. Aha!
from the swamp temple. Not a swamp brother. Is it about Arthur? Yes. He is on an important journey. But why? Arthur's met Merlin, and Merlin has told him he is to be the next king. Arthur the king? Yes, well, you and I need to go after Arthur, but <coughs> convince him to let us go over his journey with him. Wouldn't Arthur have invited us along if he wanted us to go? Arthur, I don't think it matters what Arthur would or wouldn't have wanted. He showed me the oracle Merlin gave him concerning this journey. He must take the fine allies and an unheard of magic sword, and it spoke about strange and scary, scary creatures that would be lying in wait for him. And if that happens, Arthur, he will need our help. And I know no one other than Arthur with better swordsmanship than you. I see what you're saying, brother. If you and I can give help to Arthur, I will leave with you this instant. Very good, Arthur. Very good. I'll meet you at the edge of the village in one hour. <laughs> We have been traveling for days, Arthur. 
Are you sure this map of yours is leading us in the right direction? I'm sure it is. I hope we find what this we're looking for soon. And look, there's a bird flying this way. Something I've come across while being amongst the vagabonds that run these woods. I apologize for being on the defense, but normally when there's others around, I have to fight for my food. Who are you? I am Sir Lancelot of Thatcham. Thatcham? Why, that's the southernmost part of Great Britain. What are you doing so far north? I am on the Jen. What are you looking for? The question is, who am I looking for? Who are you looking for? You probably won't believe me, not many outside of Thatcham does. But when I was just a babe in the cradle, Merlin came to Thatcham looking for the next rightful king of Great Britain. Merlin, the Great Wizard? Yes, of course. I don't remember him, but I've always imagined him in his tall grandeur. Well, he must be eight feet tall, standing above me, looking down at my trainer. <coughs> Why would Merlin come to you? <laughs> Again, you probably won't believe me, but my father told Merlin, Merlin told my father that in my 18th year, that I would leave Thatcham and look for the next rightful king, the man to be the next rightful king. That has been <clears throat> on the 18th year. <clears throat> that was nearly a year ago now. <laughs> but I've not given up hope on finding the man who is to be the next Rex in the night, the rightful king, while I'm still in my 18th year. And say, where are you? You certainly can't be vagabonds. <laughs> certainly not. This is what the princess of the northern wood. And this is Reuben and Arlettes. And I am Arthur. The three of us from Camelot. Camelot? Ca Camelot. Where, where the kings of old used to live? Where, where Merlin? Where Merlin? Used to ramble in the gardens? Camelot? What, what are you guys doing there? <laughs> they are aiming at me on an important journey. What are you looking for? That's your question. Mm. Who is he looking for? Alright then, who are you looking for? I'm looking for allies, Lancelot. I've wandered these woods a long time in search for them. Your Majesty! <laughs> get up, get up, Lancelot. I am not king yet. Do. 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 do what? <laughs> then what do you do? I'm giving this to you because I know. Because I can hardly believe you. You have just met this man and already you are entrusting him with your greatest secret. Uh, Reuben, don't you see? He told this his story first. I have no doubt that he met Merlin, and it is not by accident that we wandered through these woods. I. Don't you see the map led us here? I appreciate your caution, my friend, but it's not needed in this case. Arthur. I've been looking for you for my entire life. I will <clears throat> I am very much your service. Well, thank you, Miss Lot. So I suppose you wouldn't mind coming with us if we start tomorrow, allies? I apologize, but no, I'll be going home. Home? But you just said Merlin himself said you must be an ally to the king. Yes, I did. I knew you should not have entrusted him with your secret. Uh, hold on, hold, hold. <laughs> hold on. Hold your voices. I am very much an ally to the king. I will be going back home to gather allies that are waiting for you. What? 
How could you know who my allies are? All the men of faction took pledge before I left that they would serve the next rightful king in any way possible. This oracle seems to be mentioning a meeting with enemies. I will go get these men, and don't worry, Arthur, I will tell only those who have taken the pledge that you are to be next week. Oh, and go ahead and eat the bird. I'll catch another on my way home. <laughs> hmm, what I suppose there are only seven left now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you get this any longer, 
So I talked to Merlin. Arthur! See what you two have done. Oh, Arthur! Well, Reuben, so much for defending Arthur. I have to see that the princess can only choose to. To me, she would accuse you of such treachery. We have traveled for days, and if we go home now, it will only be in defeat. How could you possibly find it? The lady of the lake took it. Then I will find her, all that. Even if you did find her, she wouldn't give the sword to you. She wouldn't even give it to Arthur. I know. Come on, brother. Let's go home. You go home, my lad. I just need some time to, to think about all this. All right. that you have a strong desire for something. I have power. I can help you. But first, you must tell me what it is you are desiring. <laughs> My friend, Arthur, he has met Merlin, and 
Merlin has sent him on an ancient quest to retrieve the sword. Excalibur. Excalibur! Excalibur! <laughs> yes, Excalibur. Arthur's will become king once he obtains it. I was helping him look for it, and we found it. But then the Lady of the Lake took it, so Arthur went back to Merlin to consult with him. The Lady of the Lake took it. Yes. And I stay back to look for it, and when I find it, I will give it to Arthur. No need to lie to me, Reuben. You and I appear to be cut from the same cloth. You have no intention of letting Arthur have that sword. You never have. You mean to be king and give no more thought to your dear friend, Arthur. It's true, isn't it? You have no more intention of letting Arthur be king than you have, than I have of honoring the promise I made to Merlin 300 years ago. What promise? I promised Merlin that if I was allowed out of this enchanted forest, I would never go to battle against him again. Why can't you leave the enchanted forest? Over 300 years ago, the Lady of the Lake declared that Great Britain's king would need a wizard at his side. So, the Lady of the Lake told us wizards that within the year, she would choose the wizard to receive the powerful position. <laughs> Merlin went and stuck his nose in old scrolls to learn more about men. Yes, yes. But I, I went out among the mortals to learn about them. I did whatever good I could using my powers to bring peace. And the people grew to love me within that year. And I was sure I was to be asked to be the next wizard to support the king and the country. I understand. However, as you know, Merlin was chosen to be Great Britain's great wizard, and the people wildly rejoiced. I was furious. I had put heart and soul into helping those mortals, and this, this was how I was to be repaid. So, I went back out among the mortals yet again, and I found those who still supported me. And together, we went to battle against Merlin. For at the time, I thought I was more powerful than Merlin. But, apparently, with the position of Great Britain's Great Wizard comes great power. And unfortunately, I was defeated. I know, I know. <laughs> After Merlin defeated me, he put a spell on these woods, saying, <laughs> As long as I, Merlin, have more power than you, Maligant, you will never be able to leave this enchanted forest. And no mortal would be able to enter it. <laughs> <laughs>
prepare yourself for battle. And then, return here. I will search the forest and use my powers to find Excalibur. You will obtain that sword, and you will become the next king of Great Britain. And I, I will become Great Britain's next wizard. I will do as you ask, Malkin. <laughs> to Batcham and 
grab those who be my allies and tell them that I'm to be king. I hope that isn't right. Certainly, certainly. You can always tell me was just in his cradle. You would grow to be a man who can be trusted. I don't trust the Like I said, just let me to Excalibur. Well, I told my lifelong friend Reuben. He begged me to. We are as close as brothers. And he told his sister, Arlette. Arthur, Arthur, here is where you went wrong. The man did not lead you to Reuben. He demanded information from you. Then he broke his promise and told his sister your destiny. But he said it because he knew she could be trusted. Perhaps you can, Arthur, but he cannot, I'm afraid. Has he ever seen the Lord Paula? Oh, Reuben. I confess, I have seen him in a desire for power. Then I'm afraid this is not going to be easy. Arthur, hand me that work on the shelf over there. The one with the red ribbon tied to it. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> oh, you want me to open it? Yes, of course I want you to open it. I get ready to open it with these little arms. Okay, okay. <laughs> if an enemy learns of our monarch's quest and tries to steal the enchanted sword, the lady of the lake will think it best to take it as her ward. The enemy will do all he can to achieve Excalibur, even turn away from every man and trusting beasts of both feather and fur. The dreadful Maligant will assist him in this thing, but it will all be to no avail if the Lady of the Lake will entrust our king with Excalibur, which she is hiding so well. Merlin, who is Maligant? Maligant is a wizard and my enemy. Merlin, I understand this oracle! You can be taught! <laughs> I will return to the woods and not rest until I find Lady of the Lake, take responsibility for my heir, and hope she gives me Excalibur. Then all will we need runs! Sister. Ruben, you're back! 
Yes, yes. Enough is on. All right, listen. Well, I was in the forest. I met a wizard. He wants to help me get Excalibur. You met a, a wizard that is helping you? It is impressive to me the great lakes you're going to so often can obtain Excalibur. Alright. I'm not going to give Excalibur the author. Why? You read the Oracle! Excalibur belongs to Arthur! Yes, I read the Oracle, and it makes no mention of Arthur's name. It says a man of 24. It could have just as easily have been me. What has Arthur ever done for these people? While he was off burying his face in scrolls and off hunting, I was helping settle disputes among villagers and creating a fair trade system. Or that I deserve to be king. Arlette, I want you to come with me. You are skilled with a sword, and I will need you to defend me against any dangers that lie ahead. Please, do this for your brother. No. No? Ruben, my brother. My brother? What has happened to you? Arthur has been our dearest friend our whole lives. His actions have been pure and his words true. Why won't you turn against him now? Arlette, don't you see? I have a chance to be king, to help the people. You're not thinking about people, Reuben. If you were, you would see that you should support Arthur in his destiny and help him obtain Excalibur. I will not help you, Reuben. And if you know what is best for you, you will not go after Excalibur. Fine. Don't come with me then, Arlette. I will go and I will find Excalibur and I will be king. And if you will not stand with me on it, I will have no choice but to consider you my foe. while I keep watch. No, no, I'll have fun. Almost like I don't rest until Excalibur is in your hand. I hope we find it soon. Arthur, oh, good idea. I finally found you. Arlette, are you all right? I've come to warn you and to defend you. Reuben is the enemy you have unwittingly confided in. He's confessed to me. He's preparing a battle against you right now with the mighty wizard at his side. I know. Merlin told me. And it breaks my heart. Mine too. I feel like I can trust your one of your friends. I hesitate because the map did not lead me to her and I have been wrong before. Did Merlin say anything about her? He said when I saw her again, I would know she could be trusted. Arlette, please come with us. Your help is welcome. <laughs> oh. So we go this way.
by Great Britain's rightful king. Your Majesty. <laughs> get up, get up, Lancelot. 
Yes, I suppose I am king now. And with that, his great responsibility and struggles, I am afraid this will not be your last battle. Yes, my lord. But I know that I will have help. Arlette, please kneel. I dub thee Lady Arlette, my first knight of Camelot! <laughs> Monday night at six. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>